Wow. On bail. That is. That is that's so you a, tell I mean, me. Well, I, I looked into it for myself, and I, I firmly believe that this was an assassination on Bill Cooper because he was bringing to light the truth, and people don't want to hear the truth. And I have I've listened to the audio version of Behold a Pale Horse, and I've got the book now, and the Mystery Babylon series that he done should be required reading for anyone that deems themselves are, are listening to. I've got the, the audio version of anyone that thinks they are a patriot. Uh, Mr. Shamley, we're going to break. Stay with me. We will be back in three minutes on the Real News here on the Liberty News Radio Network. We are back on the Real News. We are joined with Doyle Shamley, host of Hour of the Time. The website's hourofthetime.com. Worked extensively with the late Bill Cooper, researcher, author, um, radio show host, a messenger of the truth, and it's an honor to have you with us. But we're going to continue here in a moment with uh, the... Um, bizarre incidents of his death, but uh, I have always wondered, Mr. Shamley, what was at the core of the dispute between Alex Jones and Bill Cooper, and you are probably one of the few in the world that could shed some light on this situation, so uh, I wanted to ask you, what was Bill Cooper and, and your opinion of Alex Jones and, and why? Well, uh, really, the, the the dispute between Bill and Alex uh, started because uh, of Alex's, uh, how do I put this nicely, I guess showmanship <laughs> on the air, uh, <clears throat> the exaggeration of uh, rumors, uh, emails that come through and, and portraying them as facts. When you have uh, a broadcasting job, you can't very well make fun of the corporate media and then turn around and pull their same antics when you're on the air. <clears throat> you can't, <clears throat> you have a moral responsibility, uh, along with ethical and business, to relay the news if you're really out there trying to help and save the country in a truthful manner. Not work up false flag operations like Y2K, and to sell overpriced goods to people, or for, so your advertisers can sell overpriced goods to people, uh, you're there to help them and teach them and, and let them hear the truth that the regular government-owned media is not portraying. That was the core of their dispute. And uh, Bill did a series uh, called Alex Jones 1, 2, and 3, and then he did a broadcast called Alex Jones Liar. Um, then Alex uh, constantly nitpicked back uh, as well. And in fact, Alex said how um, he had to run Bill off the air because he had Bill on an interview. And um, Bill was uh, so profane and all this that he had to get rid of him. Yet uh, that's not the case when you listen to the interview. Um, so uh, it was... An odd battle. It was really someone out there, Bill, who had been around for a long time, researched, knew the facts, uh, exposed the facts as they were, taking on someone who uh, liked to glamorize every quick rumor that came through the so-called Patriot channels. And I uh, have been involved in this since the 80s, Farron, myself, early 80s. And... Uh, the Patriot now, most of them should spell their Patriot with P-A-Y, okay, <laughs> nowadays. And uh, that's how the dispute started. Someone wanting to make a name for themselves and get big and boast and yell and blah, blah, blah on the air. And someone who wanted to stick to the hard line, we need to expose the truth through research. Well, and I would suggest that anybody that wants to hear... Uh, those very broadcasts are on our uh, MP3 uh, page. Uh, just go to hourofthetime.com and go to the hot shop and listen to it right from the uh, proverbial horse's mouth. Because I'm, I'm really not into the whole thing, Farron, where people are constantly, I'll get no exaggeration, dozens and dozens of emails and letters and phone calls daily. Well, what would Bill think about this guy that just showed up? And blah, you know, that's not a healthy thing to get into. Um, 
I'm not Diane Warwick. I don't talk to the dead or own Psychic mm -hmm. Friends Network or anything. I knew the man intimately as far as a friend and a co-researcher and lived with him. But I'm not here to second guess what he said. And he said what he said on the broadcast and stood by it. And people need to go to the source just like we always have stressed with Bill and to this day on Hour of the Time. Go to the source material. Do your research. It's that simple. Yeah, I looked at that information and I found it very interesting uh, given the fact of how big some other broadcasters are at, at this time and point right now but uh, I wanted to go back a little bit into the the death of Mr. Bill Cooper. We know he was shot five times at his front door and uh, if you could maybe uh, tell our listeners a little bit of what took place that evening by the uh, Apache County Sheriff's Department, how they had posed as teenagers and had attempted to lure him out because this kind of information people need to be aware of that we had a, a gentleman here in America telling the truth and then this kind of fate was dealt to him him by our government. Yes, and Farron, you get the uh, the benefit or whatever of this is the last time I'm going to tell this story because I'm sick of reliving it. And uh, I, don't, I don't blame you for that. So I don't blame you for that. You get to boast that, I guess. I made that decision contemplating the interview this morning with you. Not that whether I was going to be on or not, but just thinking about it. Uh, what occurred was <clears throat> after the uh, September 11th did not work out logistically and intelligence-wise for them. See, we went on the air live un non-stop for 10 hours straight when 9-11 happened. And all of that live coverage, which is critical listening, ladies and gentlemen, because things that we had multiple satellite links into the studio, etc., that day of 9-11, that very morning, we always had it. Uh, there are tons of live audio feeds that we cut in and cut back to and do commentary on, have live people on the ground reporting to us that are not talked about nowadays. Well, see, because we were in and out and had researchers run in and out and we were on the air live, their 9-11 ambush was stopped because we were live on the air. It wouldn't have gone down very well. So they had to trap them. And what they did was... Um, on the evening there, the, the November 5th and 6th. Now, remember, it happened like right shy of midnight. So a lot of dates have been blurred by so-called reporters out there. And uh, we are the only source for the real facts, the only people with all the reports. And we've always told the story, so thank you, Farron, for letting us do that again. Uh, like Tex Mars told blatant lies in his code, codec book uh, about what occurred to Bill. Bill did not get shot running a stoplight in town. What happened was we had uh, had lunch together, and I had actually just went down to get new tires for his car uh, and pay for them and have them mounted. I went and got groceries, and we did orders and lined out the broadcast. It was to be Quaviet, uh, which it was. And I went back to a side job I had and then was going to come back up the next day, pretty much the normal routine. At approximately 5.30 to 6 o'clock p.m., uh, the tactical team got together at a little reconnoiter point by the rodeo grounds, which is where they have a building. And they had it. They just decided that, oh, we got opportune time. We're going to do it today. They had already planned this out. When they came and put me under arrest that morning, the next morning, and took me uh, to the so-called command center, with helicopters, uh, federal agents all over. Uh, I saw with my own eyes the thermal imaging photographs, the satellite photographs, the FLIR photographs. They had used the UPS, which this is a national program, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, announced openly by Department of Homeland Security a long time ago that uh, UPS drivers are used frequently as spies for the government. The UPS driver, who, we, who had been coming around a lot for deliveries, would ask things like, oh, can I use your bathroom or get a drink of water? And get sketches of the house. Mr. Shamley, hold that thought uh -huh. one second. I hate it. We're, we're coming up on a break. Hold that thought. We'll be back in three minutes. Thank, thank you so much, sir. We are back on The Real News Radio with Farron and Brian. Again, we are joined with Doyle Shamley, Hour of the Time.